We are now testing the 100 watt PA amplifier. I have the rig tuned to uh, 7.1 megahertz, and I'm just going to uh, switch the transmitter on, and we'll wind the power up. Now we're running single tone, and two volts peak to peak represents 10 watts. So as we increase the uh, level, at six volts peak to peak, we're look we're actually representing 100 watts. We're reading 95 on that meter, which is close enough. And this is what the sine wave looks like. So we'll just drop that back again. I can actually go to about 8 volts, which is 140 watts. You see that there at 120. I'll now go to two tone, switch the second tone on, and we bring on the second tone. There we go. And uh, there's the uh, waveform. We're running 100 watts at the moment. The uh, waveform looks quite good. If we go over the 100 watts, around about the 140 watts we're starting to uh, limit the peak-to-peak -peak envelope. So here's a closer look at the uh, waveforms. 100 watts peak-to-peak -peak sine waves, uh, two-tone and the waveform, single-tone, it's a single-tone. Here's a view at the back of the rig. That's the 100 uh, watt amplifier and the low pass filters so signals coming out of the 100 watt amp into the low pass filters through the um, uh, SWR bridge come out ALC detector and then out of the antenna into the Oscar block into the 100 watt um, dummy load and the two oscilloscopes I've now switched the rig to the AM mode I'm using this VFO on 7.1 so I'll uh, Switch the AM transmitter on, uh, switch it on in the AM mode and show you what the waveforms look like on AM. So this is with a carrier power around about 10 watts with uh, audio. If I remove the audio you see the um, waveform drop off. Now if I increase the drive we can hit uh, the 100 watt peak to peak point and the actual carrier power is um, showing on the power meter around 50 watts. If you look at this meter, that's the current being drawn by the amp, 13.7 minus a couple of amps for the driver, the 10 watt driver and a few and the other bits and pieces in the transceiver. The actual PA is not drawing that, that's the, the sum total of the rig. That's 100 watts peak to peak, actually nearly 140 watts. Um, if I drop the carrier, that's the, the drive control and we have trouble with this crow doesn't want to like doesn't like that waveform. So increase that's the modulation or the microphone level, the tone level, and this this control is the drive level or carrier. Okay, so I'll set the carrier power about halfway and turn the tone up. And now the waveform is hitting the hundred watt mark. It's the envelope and the the sine wave. So these peaks are reaching eight, nearly 8 volts which actually represents uh, over 100 watt. This is the inner modulation distortion. At this level we're running uh, just over 100 watts. If I keep pushing the drive up we've now hit about 140 watts. You'll see the waveform uh, flat topping. That's 100 watts there. We bring it back uh, 3dB which is 50 watts and another 3 dB which is uh, 25 watts another 3 dB which is around about 10 watts peak to peak so down here would be around about uh, maybe 5 watts, a couple of watts and that's uh, well below 1 watt now so as we wind the level up and down you'll see the intermod distortion go up and down but at 100 watts which is around about there or actually around about here somewhere the uh, we're looking at minus 30, 35 dB for that side, and about minus uh, maybe a little bit better on that on that particular uh, distortion product. This is the spectrum. I'm uh, currently five megs per division, transmitting on 7.1 meg. Here we're running around about uh, that's uh, 50 watts and that's uh, 140 watts 
that's uh, around 100 watts there and you'll see the third harmonic is 10, 20, 30, 40, around 50 dB down and if you just go below the 100 watts that's 50 watts it's gone virtually gone from that display so it just pops up there with that display would be uh, uh, 55 dB so it's better than 55 dB at 50 watts and as we drop the level those uh, that third harmonic there's no signs of much else around so that's uh, running 50 watts now and if I uh, expand the display we're now 125 megs per division some of these uh, signals you'll find are still there even with the transmitter off it's just picking up stuff around the shack uh, just a quick run this is uh, 160 meters 100 watts that's 100 watts uh, on one point uh, 160 meter band uh, that's 100 watts on 80 meters a little bit, bit of clipping there not I'm probably only getting about uh, um, 80 watts on 80 meters for some reason something to do with the, the core or component values in the PA there's a 30 meter band hitting 100 watts we're actually getting uh, 140 without too much trouble uh, 20 meter band we're clipping a little bit there at just over 100 watts uh, this is on 28.5 megs. The other crow has stopped working. Its upper limit's 25 megs. That's 100 watts on 10 meters, single tone. It actually goes higher than that. It actually can put out quite a lot of steam. Um, for some reason, it seems to really like uh, 28 megahertz. That's 10 watts, 100, 140. I won't go any higher than that. This is uh, 24 megs, same thing. Really puts out a bit of steam. On six meters, we can. Uh, we're only getting ten watts out of uh, this uh, uh, amplifier. It's uh, it's not meant to go above thirty megs, but we do in fact get uh, ten watts of uh, RF out of it. That's two tone. I'll go to one tone. There it is. There. Two volts peak to peak. After the thirty dB pad, it represents ten watts. The um, 30 uh, dB 100 watt attenuator is terminated with a 50 ohm uh, 50 watt load here, which you can see. So the actual crow and uh, the two crows are actually tapped across that 50 ohm resistor. So the 30 dB attenuator has to be terminated in 50 ohm load for it to be a 30 accurate 30 dB. Otherwise, it's uh, the, the reading's wrong. So that's how how I've done that.